everyone, you're Sailing on Olive's Ark, and today we're going to be talking about the difference between a fruit fly and a gnat. Hi guys, I'm Taylor, and before we start, I just want to kind of clarify that this video is more intended for reptile keepers, but it could be true for anyone as well, because if you just have the question, um, is my house infested by fruit flies or by fungus gnats, this video will still answer your question, especially if you do have house plants. Now I do want to say, if you have house plants or reptiles, guaranteed your problem are fungus gnats, not fruit flies. So let's start with the differences between the two so you can identify which one you have, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of advice on how to actually get rid of them um, in a safe way for pets and people. So number one, the fruit fly. Guaranteed you don't have fruit flies in your house, um, and if you do, uh, that's a separate problem. So on the screen, let's create a t-chart. One side will be fruit flies, and one side will be fungus gnats. And I'm going to go ahead and put up a list of things that makes them each unique. So fruit flies tend to be a lot slower, they're a little bit bigger, they're a um, little pudgier, fatter looking. You can actually see their eyes if you look close enough. They tend to be uh, like red or yellowish eyes. Um, Fruit flies are also kind of clumsy. You'll see them jump around sometimes, uh, not always flying, and when they do fly, uh, like I said, they're very slow. And you're seeing more body than you are wing. Fruit flies also, with their name, hang around fruits, but they also hang around other foods, so they're attracted by food. Fungus gnats, on the other hand, are a lot more swift. So fungus gnats seem a little more agile. They're a lot smaller. When you look at them, you're mostly just going to see wings. You don't really see much of a body at all, and you definitely can't see their eyes. Um, fungus gnats also hang around soil and water and just tend to fly around in the air. You won't see them attracted to food as much. Uh, you will see both attracted to light, but I noticed fungus gnats do like light more. So that's the difference between the two. And if you're wondering, well, I think I know which one I have, where did this come from? Fruit flies tend to come from rotting fruit and vegetables, hence why they're attracted to foods. And fungus gnats tend to come in with contaminated soil. So for if you bring in a house plant and you suddenly notice little flying things around you, those are fungus gnats. If you bought a new plant to put it in an enclosure and you didn't properly quarantine it, again, those are fungus gnats. But you're gonna notice it hanging around potted plants, hanging around your enclosures, uh, and hanging around the water. Fruit flies you're gonna see more in your kitchen and that's about it. Let's talk about how to get rid of them. So um, again, there's a different way to get rid of them. So let's start with fruit flies. So a fruit fly, uh, because it comes from the fruit, the way you wanna get rid of them is get rid of the source. And so if you have any older rotting fruit uh, lying around, throw it away. You wanna be a clean person anyway. So throw away old and rotting fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. If you have um, healthy new fruits and vegetables that you kind of keep out in like a fruit bowl or something, for the time being, uh, Ziploc baggy those and then just keep them sealed until, you know, at all times unless you're taking something out of the bag. So you want to keep all food in a container, in a baggie. Basically, you do not want this accessible to anything from the outside. This is going to keep the flies from getting to a food source and an egg laying source and it's gonna kind of cut them off. A second place you'll also find fruit flies is sometimes they will breed in drains, especially sink drains, because you use your sink for washing and food will fall down there. So sometimes fruit flies will get attracted to the sink drain and they'll go down there. So another thing you wanna do, I recommend, is boil a pot of water and then slowly uh, dump all of that boiling water down the sink drain. That boiling water is gonna kill any flies or eggs that are hanging out in the drain and also flush them down. And another way to get rid of fruit flies is to use a vinegar little cup trap. And so these are good just to have around to catch any like hanging around fruit flies. And so what you wanna do is specifically apple cider vinegar works best. You can also use regular vinegar if you have it or beer. And what you basically do is you take a small mug you fill it up a little bit with that apple cider vinegar, put just a couple drops of dish soap, and then you're gonna cover over the top with saran wrap or plastic wrap, and then poke holes in it. And so what you basically done is created an entryway for the bugs to get in through those little holes, but when they go down to drink, the soap uh, has broken the surface tension, so they just fall into the trap, and they also can't get back out because the saran wrap over it. 
So fungus gnats are the biggest issue for most people. Uh, I see it all the time on reptile forums. I have fungus gnats, I have fungus gnats, I have fungus gnats, how do I get rid of them? So fungus gnats, although they fly and they're annoying, they breed and lay their eggs in moist soil. So right there, that's what you gotta cut off. If the soil's staying moist, that's where they're gonna be laying their eggs. Same with enclosures. So fungus gnats like moist soil. If the soil is dry, they will not lay their eggs there. So one way to actually get rid of fungus gnats is to dry out all of your soil. And I know some of you aren't gonna wanna do this, especially those of you that keep uh, like bog-like and um, tropical plants, but you're just gonna have to dry it out a little bit. Uh, this is gonna prevent them from laying eggs but it's not going to prevent the current eggs from hatching because as soon as you water it again they'll get stimulated and hatch so this kind of gets the adults to die out at least and get your numbers down you can water your plants still but what i do and what i recommend is just water them less try and have longer dry out periods just kind of push your plants a little bit to the limit one way to also help this just over time that i like to leave out is sticky traps and i really like the ones that stick into the soil don't get the ones that hang because remember you want to hit them where they're living and that's in the moist soil. So I get the sticky traps that spike into the ground. So these are the sticky traps I used. I got these on Amazon, link below. Um, and it comes in a pack of 12 and I only used two of them before I actually didn't need to use them anymore. So this goes into the soil and then you have all this stickiness just kind of floating on the edge, you know, right where the flies are. So as they're coming and going and laying and breeding and hatching, they're getting stuck to here almost immediately. And the yellow color does attract them. Another thing you can do is build the little vinegar trap like I told you with the fruit flies. So again, put in a, a half inch worth of vinegar in the bottom of a mug with a drop of dish soap. But one way I really like to get rid of the fungus gnats, and this is my favorite way, is by using something called mosquito bits. So these are the mosquito bits. This is what they look like. And I really like these because they actually kill the eggs, they kill the gnats, and they kill them at the soil. Um, it makes the soil uninhabitable. This is the quickest way to kind of speed along the process of getting rid of your fungus gnats. And so what I do if they're house plants and you don't have any animals that would potentially eat your house plants, all you do is sprinkle these bits. They look like corn kernels. You just sprinkle them along the surface of the soil and then you water over them and then they'll kind of leach in down to the soil. Um, these are perfect, but they're toxic. So like I said, you don't want to put them anywhere where an animal could potentially eat this. So I use them in just my house plants, not my enclosures, but I found a way to get around this that works in my enclosures. So what I actually started doing is I take these bits and I found this works better and more, um, you get more life out of them. I take these bits, I put a bunch in the bottom of a spray bottle and I fill the spray bottle up with water. I let it sit a day and then I actually use that water and I mist down the top of the soil. That way only the surface of it is getting the moisture. Um, the gnats are attracted to that moisture that I've sprayed it, but when they come to it, they're getting this poison. And if your reptiles are not the burying kind, like my lychee doesn't ever ever touch the bottom um, soil of this tank, uh, your, your animals are safe as well because you're spraying the bottom of your tank. I will say, it really stinks. Um, it has a bad smell to it, so I keep this in the garage, but anytime I need it, I just bring it in and I spray the surface down. And honestly, once you kill your gnats in your home, they're not going to come back unless you introduce gnats with something new, like a new infested plant. And it took me about two weeks to get rid of the gnats, and I do wanna say those of you that have the gnats and it's been a week and you're at your wit's end, sometimes depending on your methods and how aggressive you're being with the gnats, it just takes a little longer. Two weeks is not unheard of. You just have to keep going, keep pushing through, and keep up the routine. And if you're at your wit's end, I have one a um, little bit of expensive way it costs 40 bucks but it does get rid of gnats and I will prove it to you right now and it's this little thing and I don't know what it's called but it's like a gnat vacuum basically it's not a zapper um, but it is electronic and it's it's very small it's just taller than my hand what we did is we set this up in the area where we have most of our tanks and where most of the gnats are breeding coming from you plug this in and you turn it on. And what this is, is at the top here is a fan, but it's um, sucking in. So like I said, it's a gnat vacuum. The key here of why it attracts the gnats is it uh, has a little UV light. So there's a little black light that comes on at the top here um, and it's light sensitive. So at nighttime, it'll automatically pop on. And that little UV light is what attracts the gnats to it. And then once they get close enough because they're attracted to the light, they get sucked in. Guaranteed, 100% this works. And I'm gonna link it below because, this is back when we had the infestation, remember? 
Haven't had a problem for a long time. There's all the gnats, guys. All dead. Been dead, sucked in by this magical thing. And this is actually a sticky paper. And the reason I really like this too is because it's no chemicals, it's quiet, the sticky traps enclosed. If you wanted, I guess technically you could put this in an enclosure with an animal because this would not harm the animal, it's just a fan and a light. Um, but all the gnats get distracted into here so there's no poisons, no toxins, no, no exposed sticky parts. Like I said, it does cost a little bit for something like this small, but when you've got gnats and they're driving you crazy, it's worth every penny. All right, everyone, that's the end of the video. What I want to ask for you guys is to leave a comment of any tips that I might have left out. So is there something you have found really kills off those gnats or those fruit flies? Comment below. I will see you in one week next Friday. Have a great week.